You all ready to get into the Word? Okay, so we've been talking about, I started a series a while back, never, never quit. Never quit. Now, I mean, never, never quit. And, and, I, and, and this particular series is about never quit living the five purposes of the church that's found in the book of Acts chapter 2. You've been here for any length of time, like the beans have been here forever, then I, I will tell you, they know what I'm about to tell you because it's still the truth. The, the, the Word of God is full of truth. It is the revelation of truth. His name, it starts with this. His name is Jesus. And all truths that are revealed after that fall under that, that solid beginning truth, foundational truth, that Jesus Christ is truth. Turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 2. I'm going to start reading at verse 42. And most of you know it if you've ever been, if you've been here for any length of time. We're going to talk about the five purposes of the church. Never quit living the five purposes of the church. And today, specifically, I want to talk to you about worship. I want to speak to you about worship. And so turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 2. And, uh, and, and, and I'm going to start reading here in a second. I took so many pictures of kids back in the kids' room. I have to get past that. Acts chapter 2. They devoted themselves. This is the Acts church. Everybody know that we're the Acts church. We're still the Acts church. The Spirit of God is still moving in the church of Jesus Christ. We are the Acts church. Lowell, it is good to see you, my friend. Thank you for being here. Always good to see Lowell Grissom. Always good. And the reason I, I, by the way, I love this brother on his own. I love uh, Lowell and Bobette on their own. They've been friends, and they were clients for years at House of Ivy. But this family gave, uh, sacrificed uh, huge for our nation. Uh, his brother, Gus Grissom, was killed in Apollo 1. And uh, this is Gus Grissom's brother. Is, are you his little brother? You're a little brother, aren't you? So it was his big brother that, that uh, was sacrificed on the launch pad in a, with two other astronauts uh, in uh, 1960, what was it? 67. Gus gave his life on that launch pad, and uh, we honor Apollo 1 astronauts that were taken that day. Uh, Gus and, and Lowell are both on that wall of honor over there, and it means the world to me when you walk in this building. I don't name drop. I'm talking about a sacrifice. I want you to know. I'm talking about a family that sacrificed. That's the only reason I ever say that. Someone mentioned to me one time in another setting, boy, yeah, it's nice to throw names around. I said, no, that's not why I do it, because this family sacrificed. And I'll, I want to honor that every time Lowell is here. They devoted themselves, this is the early church, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to breaking the, of the bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All of the believers were together and had everything in common. Verse 45, selling their possessions they gave to everyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. I just listed the five purposes of the church. Evangelism, discipleship, these banners over here that fly over our heads remind us every week of the, the reason you and I exist as the church. Church. evangelism discipleship worship that's what we're talking about today ministries talked about that a few weeks ago and fellowship this is it, it's it's a it's a five five pronged purpose that we exist for and have existed for since the the early church was launched listen to the statement when the when a church is healthy when a church is healthy when the church of jesus christ is at a healthy state and living out the five not four, not three, not two purposes, but the five purposes, this is what happens. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. And the Lord added daily to the number of those that were being saved. When the church is being who we should be, people will want to be what we are. They will want to know why we are what we are. And, and Gina and I have had the privilege of... of um, of just having surprises in people's lives. Most of you know the story of Al and Keisha, the couple we met on a cruise ship, refused to tell them that we were pastors, because you know what happens when you tell somebody you're a pastor. They, it, it, they quickly get an idea, oh, can't do this, this, and this, and this. Had this same conversation yesterday with someone in a restaurant. Oh, seven years this person's known us and didn't know we were pastors, because these are the things. Oh, what did I, what did I say in front of you? What did I, you know? These are the things, and, and so this is, this is for us, it's an awesome opportunity 
for us to actually experience people without them having this, this view of us as a church. But there, we've had people walk up to us, three bartenders walked up to us one time in one of the bar, sports bars that we hang out in, and, and these three girls walked up to us arm in arm, and, and they said, we, we just have, we're, we're not leaving. We're going to stand right here until you tell us what's up with you two. And we'd known them for about three years. We'd gone to dinner with them. We'd spent a lot of personal time with them. And the three of them stood there and said, we want to know. I said, well, we work with people. and we No, we don't want to know that. We already know that. We want to know what's the, why are you what you are? Why are you who you are? Why are you like you are? We, and they were serious. Gina can tell you she was, standing, she was sitting there at the high top with me. And we were laughing. I said, well, I guess, <laughs> I guess I better. So I pulled out a video. I said, this is what we do. And I pulled out a church service at St. Charles River Church. We knew it. We knew you were religious. We knew you. I said, no, 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 no. We're not religious. That's not what we are. we just Christ followers. We just love God and we love people. That's all. We just love to be around people. We begin to share those things. You see, when people see who you are, and, and I've, been, I, I've, I've been blown away. It, they, they usually see it in Gina first, obviously, because she's the sweetest thing in the world. These girls get connected to Gina because Gina feels safe to them because it's not a solo guy. There's a couple here, and they feel connected, and these girls really do, and Gina has mentored some of these girls in these restaurants, but they want what you have. They've actually asked Gina, will you mentor me? Because I want to, I think you can bring advice to me. They've talked to her about mentoring in, in business, but they, they have talked about the, uh, this whole, I want to be like you. I want to be, we love who Gina is. And so I, I will tell you that people will see what they see in you and they will decide something. Your reputation, listen, the, your reputation is quickly established with a person's opinion of you and they'll decide if they want to be around you or they'll decide if they never want to be around you again isn't that true isn't that true well they will this is what for, for the believer it's an opportunity did you notice in acts chapter 2 it says and they in fa they enjoyed the favor of all the people did you catch that whatever they were like people loved them the business people in the community loved them and they said, and the, God's word said, and Luke wrote it, and they enjoyed favor with all of the people because the community was better off when the Christians were there. They, when the Christians were present in the community, you make us a better community. And so they got favor from all of the people. I'm going to read something to you because I believe that it's profound. The Lord gave it to me. I am not foolish enough to believe that I am the only one who's ever said these words. Because it's been, the world has been around a long time, but can I read this to you? I, 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 I gave this, it's on the screen, or the guys will put it up on the screen here in just a second. It is worship, it's, it's about worship. It says, man was created to worship something or someone, and who or what we worship is deeply rooted in and found in our value system. I'm going to read that again. Worship, here we go. Man was created to worship something or someone, and who or what we worship is, is deeply rooted in and found in our value system, whether it's eternal or not eternal. We have a value system, and we all want to worship what or who we value. I, I've watched videos, uh, and I'm a YouTube. I love watching YouTube. I, lo I, I am... I'm a believer that, I, I'm, I'm just praying that half of those airplane crashes on YouTube are just computer-generated airplane crashes, you know? I usually end up watching those things right before I fly somewhere, and I don't know why I do that, but I do. And, and these, these are horrific videos of airplane crashes, and I'm just praying most of them are. I actually believe they are, because one time I saw an air, airplane fly through another airplane, and it didn't blow up. So I know that was computer-generated. Having said that, I watched a Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson concert. In fact, I, I played it in here. I played that, that, that uh, scene in here several years ago with St. Charles River Church. And I saw this, and, and as Michael Jackson comes in, uh, it was the beginning of his concert, 
and the people are buzzing. You know, and if you're old enough, you remember Elvis, how, how it all happened with Elvis, you know. People, girls were just fought, fainting. They were falling out, you know. If they were in church, they'd say, well, they're out in the spirit. No, they're out in Elvis is what they were out in. But in Michael Jackson's case, this particular concert, Michael comes flying across and this light is on Michael as he's flying across the people over the heads and they're swooping him down and he's got, his, he's got these like wings out and he's swooping down over the crowd. Every group he swooped over fainted. They were so overwhelmed with worship of Michael Jackson. They were overwhelmed. They, we, you see, they, that's, that was who they valued most. That's, they paid outrageous dollars to go see those, and we do it all the time. The performers we want to see will invest. How, how, how do, how, listen, it's, it, the, we were created to worship something or someone, and we desire to pour out praise. We do it with our grandkids. I said we do it with our grandkids. We, they can do no wrong. Oh, aren't you the smartest? That's the prettiest child I have ever seen in my life. That's the mo and, and they are. That's, they are. We said, that, yeah, we all agree. All of our grandkids are the most beautiful grandkids. We worship them. Can I tell you, we also get distracted by things. We really do. Man, I love that car. I'm going to wax that car. I'm going to wax that car. How many of you know I love to wax cars? And, and then when I realized I was waxing my car every two weeks, I thought, oh, my Lord, I need to get through this. So God took one of my wings away. <laughs> you know, I, 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 got, I got tendonitis in my right shoulder. You can't do that wax on, wax off thing. So I started doing it with my left shoulder. God took my left shoulder away. <laughs> you know, all of a sudden I'm realizing maybe I'll just run it through the car wash. But we get distracted. I, I, can I just be real with you? Now, I know this is very little to do with, but I want to tell you something. We get really distracted. I was sitting over here a while ago when I was worshiping, and where I'm standing right over here, and I know I'm off the camera, but if you're watching by camera, I'll be right back. So I was standing right over here, and I was worshiping, and all of a sudden I noticed there's a spider web that goes from that speaker down to that, that, that stand a while ago, and I'm looking at that, that spider web, and it's just one line. And I'm just watching that spider web, and I'm thinking, Lord, is that spider going to Some of you look at me like, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I was. I, I mean, we get distracted. We're worshiping the creator. A spider web. Squirrel. Yeah, who, who said squirrel? Who said squirrel? Okay. Squirrel. We get distracted. You know, we're, we're worshiping. We're trying to give God our very best. And, and we, give, we give God, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to worship the creator. A spider web. I wonder if I'll see that spider come down. Well, I'll, I'll stare at it a few minutes. It's shining. It's glistening. And, and you know, is that spider going to show up? See, that's how, that, don't you all feel sorry for Gina? Because that's, that, that's who I am. I am easily distracted. I am easily distracted. I want you to know, though, that, that we're all created to worship and to, and to glorify and to magnify something or someone. We desire to do that. Because God put that in us. Back in the, book of, in, the back, in the book of Genesis, rather, God created man to abide with him. God created man. He actually breathed his very breath into man. Check it out in the book of Genesis. He actually breathed his very breath into man. It's the only thing in creation that God gave his breath to was man. God, God gave us breath to worship him. God gave us breath to worship him. And all of a sudden, we got distracted. Uh, Grandpa uh, Eve and, Ad, and Grandma Eve got distracted. There was something that looked delicious to them, something that looked better for them, something they had a spider web. No, they had a fruit, and it looked distracting to them. Listen, I'm going to tell you something about, what, what, this is what Jesus said in the book of John. This is, God is looking for people to worship him. Listen, God is, God is looking for people to worship him. In the book of John, chapter 4, Verse 23, it says, yet, this is Jesus speaking, yet a time is coming and now has come when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. I want to go back to that one statement. This is the kind of worshiper that the Father seeks. Get this, 
God is looking for us. He's looking for a, 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 a people that will bow down and worship him as creator, as Lord, as the creator of the universe. He is looking for a people who will worship him in spirit and in truth. He isn't just, it's not just a whosoever will. He's looking. He's actually called each of you in this room to worship him in a way that you don't naturally have the ability to do. I naturally have the ability to worship a car. I naturally have the ability to worship the things I own. I naturally have the ability to love certain performers, certain bands, and to go see them perform. I have that natural ability because it's my flesh. But God said, I'm looking for a people who fall in love with me in the spirit, and you are looking for me to change your spirit and line your spirit up with my spirit and become one with me. Not just be like me, but become one with me. He is looking for people that will worship him that way, truly setting aside all other things. He is, Deuteronomy chapter 6 says, the Lord God is one. I think it's about verse 4. It says the Lord God is one. When Moses wrote that, what he was saying is, there can be no other gods. In fact, the Ten Commandments, I, sh there shall, I shall have no other gods before me. Why? Because those gods exist in the imaginations of man. Get this picture. I want to say it again. God said, I'm not going to allow any other God before me. He said, I will allow not because there are, and he said they are idols. Moses wrote, those are idols. Those are false gods. But they exist in the imaginations of people. But you and I exist in the imagination of the creator. There's a difference. You and I ex existed in his imagination, and he created us out of his creative imagination to be one with him, not just observe him. Amen. To actually, then he said, oh, well, in the beginning, he said, I'll make, let's make man in our image. And it wasn't just a hands and feet kind of an image. No, no, no. We're little creators. Now go be fruitful and multiply. You create. Now you create little humans. I mean, serious, get the picture. He created us to be one with him, not just observe creation, but to create with him. Here, you will be, this is what he meant when he said, you'll be like me, you'll be creators. We won't be gods, we'll be creators though. You'll be just like me, one with me in the spirit. And because you worship me in this way, you will be my people, and I will be your God. Man, I'm going to tell you something. This whole thing of worship, we exist. One of the five purposes of the church isn't just to come in and do some music. That's part of the extension of worship. That's one thing, but we have said this now for 22 years. Anything that honors God is an act of worship. Anything that honors God is an act of worship. If you bless somebody at a restaurant, I've said this a hundred times from this platform, if you bless somebody in a restaurant, a family that the Lord just lays on your heart, go pay their bill. It's a single mother, probably struggling, to just she's struggling just to keep her head on straight because she's got those kids going nuts at the table. And God's, God lays on your heart to bless that woman, pay that woman's bill, or a single dad for crying out loud even. Whoever the Lord leads you to bless, that is an act of worship. You don't even have to stand there and say, seriously, you don't have to stand there and say, this was from the Lord. I just wanted you to know that the Lord told me to do this. You don't have to explain. It's an act. Heaven starts applauding. Heaven. We don't want man's applause. We want heaven's applause. Because when we're really worshiping the creator in a spirit and in truth, we want nothing to do with the applause. We want nothing to do with the explanation. All I know is, uh, I, you know, Max Lucado wrote the book, The Applause of Heaven. If you've never read it, you ought to. It'll change why you do what you do in the manner that you do it. You don't have to ever give an explanation of an act of kindness after that. You, in fact, here's the truth. You don't even have to let them know you did it. That's right. Amen. Can't tell you how many times Gene and I have said to the server, don't tell them until we leave. I mean, the Lord has really pushed that with me. Don't tell them until we leave. Because I want the Lord, the creator. I want the wonder of the moment for the family to say, 
I mean, somewhere in there, I'm leaving room for the Holy Spirit to say, I blessed you. I am your supplier. I am your Jehovah Jireh. I am your Jehovah Rapha. Now, they may not know those phrases yet, but I am the one who supplies all your need. And I love the wonder of the moment. Who did it? Who did it? And when nobody takes claim, there's only one in the room. Even if they don't get it quite yet. How many of you have been blessed at McDonald's? The person in front of you paid for your meal. How many has that happened? That's happened to me. 99.1 started this thing. What's it called? Joy FM? Enjoyed. You've been joyed. Going through, yeah, you, and you, you, go through, you go through the drive through and you pay for the person's food behind them, right? After they've honked at you, flipped you off, and all kinds of things, you know? <laughs> that, that's when I really love paying for their meal most. I really do. And, and I, don't, I don't leave a message. You tell them I love them. I don't, I, I've never done that. It's, but I've actually had some, you know, I've had some times where I thought, Lord, I just need to bless that person by me. They've blessed me with that finger enough times, Lord. I just want to go ahead and bless them right now. And I'm going to go ahead and bless them. But I just, I just want to pay for the meal behind me. Don't, yeah. It's, it's a beautiful thing. But anything that please God, pleases God, that thought you just had, I'm serious. I, it can be this simple. That thought you just had of I sure do, I, I want, Lord, I want to pray for, I want to pray. Do you know that Barb Hickman was in the hospital last night? You all know that Barb Hickman was in the hospital last night? So let me just share with you. Barb Hickman was in the hospital last night. And we're praying for Barb. We all need to pray for Barb. She's, she's back home. She's resting today. But we need to pray for Barb. Anytime the Lord brings something to your mind, Lord, I just need to pray for Barb. I need to pray for Mike. I need to lift that person up in, in, in prayer. Lord, I just want you to bless them. I don't even know why I'm doing it. The other day, Ken, you, you were, we were on this, this guy's, we got a, a, a text message with a million guys on it. Seems like it anyway. And not quite, not quite, almost, half a million. And so, and so uh, the other day, Ken shot a message to one of our guys. You know something? I want to know how you're doing. Because the Lord woke me up last night and I've been praying for you. Who does that? I'll tell you who does that. The one who hears from God. That, that's who does that. You know, that's who does that. It's the one that actually expects to hear from God. And then when, when he says, dude, I'm going to act on it. I'm not just going to pray. I want to know how you're doing. Well, that, the, other, the, the guy on the other end is going, I'm doing pretty good. Thank you. Thank you. That is really cool that somebody, God woke someone up to pray for me. You don't know what car accidents you didn't have that day. You don't know what illness you didn't catch in a restaurant you were in that day. You don't know. But God says, pray for them. That's an act of worship when you obey what God the Spirit is telling you. And he tells you in the Spirit. And if you're not, uh, if you're not operating in Spirit and in truth, whose truth? Within the boundary of Christ. If you're not operating within that truth, you don't hear those things. You sleep right on through it. And then there's a car accident. Now, I'm not saying that happens every time. I'm just saying that's the potential. But someone wakes up to pray. God wakes someone up to pray for someone, none of us, doesn't make sense to us, but I know this, somebody's sitting here in this auditorium today, unharmed and healthy, because God was worshipped through obedience. Do you get the picture? We are created for these five purposes, and this one today, the act of worship. Every time you wake, you know, it's that song, when I get up in the morning, and when I lay my head to rest, I am blessed. I am blessed. What am I blessed for? To worship my Creator. And everything I do, everything I say, even my thought life, God, I want my thought life to bless you. I want, I want, I want you to put thoughts in my mind. I want you to wake me up in the middle of a night, in the middle of a beautiful sleep. I want you to wake me up, and I want you to tell me who to pray for in the middle of the night. Last night, Barb had a, I, I don't know how bad the car accident was, but when she had this situation where apparently it was some kind of massive pain that struck her, she actually hit a pole. And I got the call from the family. Man, we just started praying. We were praying. 
I, I was praying. Gina had prayed. We were, and the family was there. They, I, they always know I'm there. If, if you want me there, I'm there. But I, I don't always just go. It's just I need to know that y'all want me there. Okay, so that's, that's I, I go with that, and they didn't ask. So I, I stayed at home, but I did say, if you need me, I'm there. You tell me, and I'm there. So they followed the ambulance, and they got there. And I was reassured by Mike, Barb's husband. At this point, she looks good. At this point, the tests are looking good. So you just, just you know, I'll keep giving you reports. I'll keep giving you reports. I said, good. So reports kept coming till this morning. And I'm just like, Lord, we are, we are so blessed to have a family. We're blessed to have a family. It's not just a pastor thing. It's a family thing. It's a family thing. And I'm blessed to have you. And I'm, I'm blessed to worship with you. Stand with me if you would. I'm, I'm blessed to worship with you. Don't ever, ever quit worshiping the Creator. And not just, not just lifting your hands, not, not just in a motion of lifting your hands and, 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 and saying, Lord, I, verbally saying, Lord, I praise you. Of course, that's a beautiful thing to do. But worshiping him, when you roll out of bed, Lord, you're so good. Declare who he is. Do you know how much God loves to hear you declare his names? Lord, you are my Jehovah Rapha. You are my healer. Lord, you, you, are, you are Jehovah Jireh. You are my provider. Oh, God loves that. You know what? It, 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 just seriously. Wives, don't you love to hear your husband say, you're my pretty baby. You're my girl. You're the one I love. Now, some of you have lost that one who says that. Some of you have lost that person. But I'm going to tell you, well, I know where he's at. He's with the Lord. But I'm going to tell you something. God gives us, in moments when we're absent of the one who tells us those things, he gives us the lover of our souls, and his name is Jesus. And he's telling you, baby, you are the prettiest thing. I love you. You're my baby girl. You're my baby girl. You'll forever be my baby girl. I'm so proud of you. You're my baby girl. I'm so proud of you. Oh, you're my handsome son. You're my handsome son. I am so proud of you. You may have gray hair. You are my son. And I am pleased with you. I'm pleased with you. I love you. I couldn't have a finer son. You know, that's the kind of way he speaks to us. The one who worships him in spirit and in truth hears those words. I grieve when people say to me, I, you know, Barry, you say you hear from God. God never speaks to me. I never, hear, I never hear from God. God speaks to you. Are you hearing him? God speaks to you. And he, he, I'm just telling you, this is the way he speaks to me. I love you. I'm so proud of you. That white hair on the top of your head, now that I got white hair. I'm so proud of you. That white hair on the top of your head, you're a good man. Lowell Grissom, you're my man. You're my son. And I am pleased with you. That's how he speaks to me. I get up in the morning, and he calls me Barry. He doesn't call me Lowell, but he says, Barry, I adore you. And I'm like, if people thought I heard those kind of things, they would think, Barry, you're so such a narcissist to believe that God actually talks to you and tells you he adores you. What a narcissist. You are so narcissistic. If that's what they call faith and trust in my daddy, then I'm a narcissist. I, so be it. I'm a narcissist. I've seen a few politicians that I think fit that better. But I'm telling you, no, it's because they tell themselves how good they are and how wonderful they are. I'm talking about the daddy who loves me. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? When Kaysen walks by here, he wants to go up there, he wants to preach every Sunday. That's what he says to me. Grandpa, one day I'll wash houses and preach on Sundays. I'm like, go on up there, buddy. Go on up there. And I'm like, go on up there. Go. He, he's so used to hearing from his daddy and his mommy, from his grandparents, we love you. We're proud of you. Proud of you. Oh, my goodness. Dude, you're my kid. You're my son. I'm proud of you. Don't you ever let anybody tell you I'm not proud of you. That guy's a liar. Don't you ever listen to that voice again. 
And the only ones that hear that are the ones who worship in spirit and in truth because the spirit speaks to you and you hear his voice saying, I love you. Don't you ever listen to that liar again. Don't you ever listen to him. Don't you give him the same platform as you give me. Now, I've heard that a few times. And I knew that was God, because I've heard that a few times. Don't you ever give him the same voice platform that you give me. Amen. That's why I want to worship him in spirit and truth. Because the one thing I've learned, and I'm going to wrap it up. But then you all said amen. The one thing I've learned, and I've said this a dozen times here. If, if a female voice calls me up, on the other end and says hi Paul what you doing I better never say who's this if, if that female voice calls up and says hey baby baby what you doing I better never say who is this you know why I because I know the lover of my heart I know her voice see I've heard it I know I'm intimate with that voice. I know that voice. Now, y'all know what, what those pet names were. Y'all know, remember those pet names that you called each other? You know you, you know when it's your baby. And, the, and they, they start talking to you that way. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, you, you don't want to say, who's this? I don't, when God speaks to me, I never do this. Who is this? Who is this? You see, I know my daddy's voice. I know the lover of my soul's voice. And when he speaks to me, Yep, I sure hear you. Bow your heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, open our hearts. If there's even one in this room, no one's looking around. If there's even one that would like to commit your life to Jesus Christ for the very first time or for the 100th time, it took me 42 times to finally get serious about my commitment to Christ. But you'd like to raise your hand and pull it right back down. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm going to pray with you right where you stand. You want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. And you want him to be your God. And you want to be his child. You want to worship him in spirit and in truth. You want to hear that voice like you've never heard that voice before. Raise your hand up and pull it right back down. Yes. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone? Yes. I see that hand. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I want to, I want to know God's voice, and I want him to be my Lord and my Savior, and, and I'm going to commit like never before. I'm all in. I'm all, everybody say, I'm all in. I'm all in. Had a few that raised their hands. So anybody else? No one's looking around. Bow your heads with me for just a second. Anyone else? Anyone else? I want to know God like I've never known him before. I want to give him my life, my heart, my soul, everything, that, and I want him to be my God like never before. Okay, then I want everybody to pray this prayer with me. Everybody, pray this prayer with me if you would. Heavenly Father, today I confess that it's been a long time since I've heard your voice. And today, I'm hearing it loud and clear. I want you to be my God. I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. Today, I commit my life to you wholly and completely. Forgive me of all of my past, all sin. Forgive me. I trust you with my past, and I'm trusting you with my future. In the name of Jesus, right now, I said right now, I am saved. Now give the Lord a huge hand. Give the Lord a huge hand. You may have recommitted your life today. You may not have raised your hand, and that's okay. It's not between me and you and God. It's between you and God. Amen. But I want to encourage you when you leave this place, start remembering everything you do that pleases God is an act of worship. It is why we exist Amen. in the name of Jesus. Father, we leave this place knowing that you are God, you are our creator. You are the beginning and you are the end. And we want to know your voice. Today, we leave really sensitive, listening for your voice from this day forward. We worship you in the name of Jesus. And every believer said, amen. God bless you. Give the Lord a huge hand.